Hello everyone, Sir Monkey Suit or Zappy here, back again with Attack on Titan Season 4. We are on Episode 9, um, and I haven't really fully gotten over last episode. Um, because that's, it's just tough to take. Like, this, that is, it's too much of a, of a big deal, you know. Um, and speaking of, of big deals, um, I just want to say thank you to everyone uh that commented in the last episode um about my sort of hatred for Gabby and all you guys that that understood where I, w I was kind of coming from um in regards to sort of being reserved like I I made this like just the kind of big deal out of trying to suppress kind of my sort of I didn't want to go mental, so I had to kind of just pull myself back and like rein myself in a bit. Um, but thank you to everyone that understood, um, because this is a thing is something with that me personally, like as a um, as a reactor, and when I react to things, I, I understand what you know a vast majority of viewers want, like what they are looking for, which is. They, they watch reactions to get the same, to sort of relive that first time again through somebody else. Um, you know, so when, you know, if someone's values or somebody's way of thinking like doesn't line up with theirs, it's easy for like the viewer to not enjoy it. And then therefore like, you know, it's like almost like I, I can turn them away by doing something that they disagree with or saying something that they disagree with um but in in regards to gabby it's it's uh it's just that thing of the para the paradisians are like that's kind of us you know in a way that's the the, the most simple way I, that i can kind of describe it it's like the thing is about the show is that like i understand the the you know the, the storytelling about being that war sucks and it's not a, like you know it's not about you know whose side is is evil or anything like that and then therefore that's like you're supposed to objectively think that way but then in the same vein it's like that is our flaw as human beings that we can't see you know what i mean it, it's always like we are emotional selfish creatures so you know what i mean like if nowadays our country was to go to war with another country you would back your own because that's these are your people you know what i mean that's the kind of the idea behind it and we've been with you know the paradis characters for so long now that when a person kills one of our own it's natural to just not <sighs> the thing is, is that this. I just want to thank you anyway. I want to thank everyone that understood that you know it's fine for me to, you know, let it out, so to speak, and not try and rein it in because there are people out there that want to see me truly react, you know, properly. And I reined it in a lot last episode because, you know, this is something that's been happening for a, a kind of a, a long while. If you go all the way back to episode one. Uh, of Attack on Titan with Hannes, um, you know, I had really harsh criticisms to, to, you know, about Hannes in that moment where he runs away and everything, right? Um, which a lot of people didn't like. So, you know, ever since then, it's like, it's been that kind of balancing, uh, balancing act where, you know, my natural reaction versus not going overboard with everything, but it, it's so fucking, it's so difficult when I just want to you know what I mean? I need I, I need to let that emotion out because it's fucking it's tough. Um, but I don't want to keep you guys here too long before the you know the episode. But um, there was, there was just some things that like, you know, someone was saying that they were a bit disappointed that I didn't actually go into the Zeke thing more. But it it was just it was tough because the, the episode was, you know, it, it, yes, it's it's a big deal that Zeke is now operating with uh, the Paradise group in some capacity, but you know like you can't hide from the elephant in the room which was sasha so 
you know it um and you know it, it's it, that's a hard thing as well the balance is, is in episodes that are so emotionally heavy it's hard to even talk about the other stuff you know uh i always find that tough um so yeah i mean real quick um zeke yeah i think the reasoning for what he is doing is wanting to take over to some degree. I think um, his sort of ambitions lie not with Marley but with himself, and I think that's that's also apparent. The reason why he actually went against um, you know his own father. I, I think uh, you know now knowing that Aaron, his own brother, half brother, has the founding Titan, that they can mix their powers together with. Uh, Zeke actually having the royal blood from Dina, uh, his mother, and the founding Titan to actually make them a hell of a lot more powerful. But I think that Zeke, the reason why Zeke has actually switched sides is not, I, I just think he doesn't, Marley was just a way for him to sort of, I guess, you know, he got the Titan from them, um, and, uh, you know, so he got that power. But I just think that he's with seeing the founding Titan as well. Like he has ambitions and somewhat to, to you know, take over. But it, I think he's mostly for himself. But it is interesting though, especially considering like, would he truly be for himself if he only knows that he's got a year left anyway? Is there any point? You know what I mean? So I don't know. It, it's it is interesting though, and we'll, we'll see. Maybe he's just trying to put his ambitions onto Eren, um, you know what I mean, to like kind of continue it on, but I I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I think that's all I'm uh, going to talk about, and I think we're just going to get in episode 9 um, uh, and, and just see what the aftermath of this is. So, uh, yeah, sorry for keeping you guys so long. Uh, as always, the reaction will be here on YouTube, um, but if for whatever reason in the future it gets taken down for copyright, uh, then I will re-upload this video as a discussion only, and the reaction link will be in the description below. And uh, as always, the full length, uh, link to the reaction will be in the description to this episode. So if you want to watch this uh, reaction in full and not just the cut 10 minute version, then the offer is there for you. But yes, nothing else to really talk about. So we're going to get an episode 9 of season 4, see what we get. So without further ado, let's go. We're coming back then. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was hiding under the boat. Oh, my God. He's carrying the ship on the land. Look how huge he is. That is so much bigger than 15 meters. ちなみに、お人差し、お先にお越しのお連れ様のお客様とは、すでに仲良しです。ブッディヘル。私に代わる子の悪魔どもを撃ってください。お前の三文指導に付き合う気はねえ。後ろの巨人が見えないのかな。
周りに故郷を奪われ兵士として徴用された我々はとても非力で彼に導かれるまではゼイク周りや世界の人々が悪魔と呼んで恐れる巨人私には全く別のものに見えた神です無力な私たちに希望を見せてくれましたヨレハズのインテレストのものジークイエーガーの命を受け上官を打ったハンマーレ義勇兵ですその目的は全エルディア人の解放どんがいだそんなバカな話に乗るものか相手は獣の巨人だぞ奴らの目的は終始一貫して始祖の巨人の奪還力づくがダメなら口八丁手八丁尽くせと言わんばかりだなジークイワクエルディア人の問題を一挙に解決する秘策があるとその秘策を行う条件として必要なものが始祖の巨人と王家の血を引く巨人二つが揃えば世界は救われるただしその秘策を明かせるのは条件が揃ってからだそれは本当です、yeah. 思い出したんですチョチティーナ<笑>王家の血を引く巨人と接触した瞬間でしたその巨人は父の妻であったダイナ・フリッツに違いありません我々エルディア人に残された唯一の希望を<笑>壁に潜む幾千万もの巨人で世界を踏み潰す力士の発動条件をヒストリアの身を案じたからです俺の不確かな情報で巨人にさせるわけにはいかないと思っていましたそうもいきません。カンジャスバインデノフィニーダーサセンカラコノシマオマモルタメニワギユーヘイノチカラガヒチヨナノデスツトタスケオマテタツチスマーパンヘイノモーダイジョブラゾーパーキーナオフォーキーナオフォースズマンランド汚れた悪魔の汚らわしい島へようこそ、もてなしてやる。<笑>でも海の向こうにいる人たちは、敵だけじゃなかった。そして、世界はずっと複雑で、知らないことだらけだった。おにゃんぽこんはなんで肌が黒いのですか俺たちを作ったやつはこう考えた。いろんなやつがいた方が面白いってな。誰が僕らを作った<笑>シソユミルに力を与えた存在神だよそう考えるやつもいる<笑>考えるだけなら自由だろう。海の幸は初めてですかニコロはマーレ料理の達人なんですよ<笑> yeah, point,、yeah. いやなら食うなよエルディアジお前らなんかに食わせてやるおっさーしゃーえー、ヨロさんあなたは一体何だぞ<笑>もうすぐ港が完成するんだ。そりゃ、最初はお互い疑心暗鬼でうまくいかなかったよ。でも、時間をかけて、肩書きを抜きにして、人同士向き合えば。Mm. Spend some time together, so... That's all we need. 本当に、血ならして世界を脅すことでしか。エルディア人を守る術はないのかなってそれじゃ本当に世界を恐怖に陥れる悪夢だマーレや世界中の人と話し合って誤解を解けば誤解誤解って何のことだよ世界から見れば俺たちは巨人に化ける怪物だそこに誤解はないだろう時間が必要だ、うん、そうだ時間を稼ぐためには手出しできねえようにしてやるんだあ、oh. あ、oh, come on! Why? 本当に、僕たちは正しかったのかなおいお前もあれでんだろここに何しに来やがった How a dude! こいつは俺たち !Fuck's sake! Nick, Nicolo? Because he seemed to like Sasha, so... なんでだよ飛行船に乗り込んできた子供に撃たれたって。そんなバカな話があるかよ。俺の油断があったわ。すまない。なんで俺に謝る。俺はただ飯を用意してただけだ。Enjoyed it though, you know? うまいもんいっぱい食わしてくれた。ありがとうな。ダサシャは
双子みてえなもんだった自分が半分なくなっちまったみてえだ娘が世話になったようやねあーフォーク Shit! あの、ガッディンイヴンティンクダディスティマイピソーライフォーリオリニントシェシューロキョカウモティマスムスメサマオレノリオリオダリオリモウマソニタベテクレマスタモシヨカタラオレノリオリオタベニキテクダサイモチロンタダナヤロウハイバレイクネコローマンバレイクンカンダイナオコトバニカンシャイタシマスダガオレオエレントアワセルノガサキダロそう急ぐなお前に最上級のホテルを用意したんだマーレから奪ってきた巨人化の薬はこれで全てです本当に何と感謝を申し上げればよいことか特にらの勇士を疑うことは悪魔の修行に等しくあろうこの3年間エルディア人の友人であることを証明してきたつもりでしたが虫のいい話ですまんが我々の弱さにしばしの間だけ目をつぶってくれる。Wow. Get it though, it is. It's, it's tough. Oh, 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 it's tough. Fucking hell. I don't even want to see your face, man. I don't even want to see your face, man. I don't even want to see your face, man. I don't even want to see your face, man. I don't even want to see I wonder if she can hear. Katena Kashi Kateba Hikir Totaka Nakareba Katenai Totaka Totaka. Ah, fucking hell, I remember that. That was from like episode seven. Ah, oh, man. Okay, episode nine. Really, really cool. Uh, I, I love these episodes that are like, they're kind of like. Flashbacks to like how we got up to this point, you know what I mean? And、uh, I was wondering if we were ever going to get like something like you know what exactly happened beforehand, so that you know we're all caught up on how we got to the point in the last episode、um, with you know Zeke joining forces with that、uh, with Paradise. So, yeah, really, really cool.、Um, there's a lot of little amazing parts of this episode.、Um, I'll get the the saddest one out of the way first,、um, just so I don't have to like, dwell on it longer than I have to. But、uh, yeah, so there was a, a transition where Eren shot.、Uh, he was obviously you know, practicing with、uh, this new weaponry that the Marlians brought over,、um, or the volunteers brought over.、Um, and yeah, so he's practicing and he shoots, and it immediately transitions back to Sasha getting shot again, which.、Um, Is so fucking sad.、Uh, but it's. it's、uh, I think the idea behind it is that the, like, Eren. Eren's plan got her killed.、Um, you know, because obviously if that didn't happen. But then, you know, that's basically what it's trying to tell us. But the thing is, is that, like, I can't. I can't truly blame Eren for that because. A lot of things have to happen in order for everything to go the way that it did. You know what I mean? Like, if the Warhammer Titan was actually in Willy, then they would have been probably away at that point, you know?、Um, and things could have happened differently. But it is the one thing that, like, you know, you can't escape from is the fact that Eren went and did his own thing, which the scouts were sort of forced into a battle that, you know, they. Like, necessarily didn't want. So, you know, it, it、uh, sort of second hand, it, it was sort of his fault. But yeah, that, that transition was a、uh, really cool way to, to, you know, to show that, but fucking hell, it was sad.、Um, 
so yeah, I mean, we had uh, Sasha who has actually been buried, um, and the father shows up. I completely fucking forgot about the father, and also uh, that uh, that little girl is there as well, the one that Sasha saved. So yeah, I think uh, the, the father, uh, Sasha's dad, is bringing her up. Which is nice, but again, it's just fucking sad, man. Um, Connie, basically, like, you know, t t he saw Sasha as almost like a twin and that he's other half. Uh, you know, he, he, he feels like, like a part, like half of him is, is kind of dead. Um, it's just fucking sad. And then Niccolo as well. So, Niccolo, I, I like him. Um, he had like a really it, it was very simple and it was very uh you know like a, a a quick turnaround but of course it would be because it it's taken place all in one episode you know and it's taken place over the course of a lot of years where you know the captured Malians are getting to know the paradise uh lot and starting to become friendly with them you know um so from the you know the very beginning when he when Levi has the sword in his back and he's telling them to do, like he's telling the guys on the boat to just shoot these devils and everything, to you know being a chef and making them seafood, which is obviously something that they've never had before, um, and you know that 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 was like the switch is that because Sasha loves food so much that she just dug into this lobster, which I feel like she just ate the shell. At least in that first bite, it looked like she just ate through the shell, which I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't put it past her. She doesn't know how to eat lobster, you know? Um, but because she was enjoying it, like, that much, like, it kind of pulled at Nicola's sort of, like, heartstrings, you know? Like, I, you know, because I can imagine, I mean, I'm, I'm not a chef, um, you know, but to take pride, like, in one's cooking from being a chef... To seeing like somebody appreciate it so much like Sasha would do is like enough for him to actually start changing his view of you know uh, the people on Paradise. So you know from that to of course you know S Sasha dies and you see like over the grave uh, the graveyard, which I imagine was built. Um, not too long after, like in terms of the uh, the scouts and everything that lost their lives um, during the Battle of Chigansheena, I imagine that Erwin's probably buried there as well. Um, we see over the graveyard that like there's a fucking there's a fucking alien kicking the shit out of a Malian, right? And yeah, that, that one made me angry because, I mean, you know, it. Because obviously, like, you know, the, up until, like, you know, this point, I've always been saying that obviously I'm on the, uh, like, the side of the paradise and everything. But, like, now you've got this interesting dynamic where it's, like, the opposite of what is happening over in Mali, where it's like the, you know, the Malians over here are. I don't know, like, semi sort of prisoners of war, but like, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're working essentially for the, um, for the Paradisians. But you're seeing them steadily become friends, and obviously Niccolo had, you know, he, he, Sasha was the one that turned them around on the Paradisians, so, you know what I mean? It was clear that, like, I don't know if Sasha had, like, in him had some kind of like romantic relationship thing going on um it, it didn't allude to that but like you know it was i don't know well it it, it kind of could have if you take nicolo's um uh quotes to connie right kind of like how do you feel about this you know and then connie basically coming back with you know a pretty natural thing to say is like she was like a sister to me which is you know you hear that like all of the time like if like you are close with a uh you know if, if there's a male that is close with a female that are like friends but they're close people can often like you know 
say like, oh, you two are good for each other, or like, you know what I mean? You you two would make a great couple, and one thing to say is like, no, she's like a sister to me. It's not like you know. So I don't know. There, there could be in a sort of like you know, there could have been alluding to the fact that like Nicolo, uh, Nicolo had romantic feelings for her, um, you know, and I, I don't know if that was ever reciprocated by Sasha, you know, because. I mean, Sasha never really, I don't know, I guess, I guess there was never, like, a time where she, like, she didn't feel like a, like, one of those characters that, you know, is into, like, having a relationship, really, you know, so, but, you know, it's, it's tough to say, but yeah, I mean, regardless, um, because of that, just, like, quick little character arc for Niccolo, I, I, I like him, um, and he's, he's still alive, so, you know, we uh, we may see him again, um, and it'll, it'll be interesting to see where we go from here because um, th there's. I tell you what, like this fucking this show, this episode, like the way that it was set out, it is so like just the way that it is presented, um, is so amazing. Like it's in a lot of ways, this is similar to episode five, um, where like sort of like you know it's setting the stage for like what happens afterwards um the storytelling it's just a really great storytelling episode because the whole episode you're listening to armin talk to seemingly just a shell i mean you remember that shell from the end of season three but in a similar sort of vein like armin has always been the narrator of the show so it's interesting like but like when he was narrating before it was always like from a you know, like from a, a like almost like if, if you're listening to an audio book, right? You're listening to somebody tell the story. It's always kind of been that way, but in this situation, you're actually seeing him talk. You know, um, which is uh, which is interesting. But uh, so it makes you think, like when Armin is actually narrating in the earlier seasons, is he actually talking to somebody? Because I've, I've, you know, I've always said that like if he's the one narrating the story, then it. it could possibly be a case of like Armin's coming up to the end of his, you know, his cycle as a, uh, as a, as the Titan, as the Colossal Titan, and he's just telling the story to a bunch of people in order to, uh, so that maybe I don't know, like he could be telling the whole story to a, a bunch of world leaders to try and get the perspective across as to why they're not devils, right, uh, and that they can, that peace can be achieved. And if any character was going to do that, it would be Armin. So, you know, it it, it was just like an interesting way to set up, uh, you know, the, the whole episode, uh, setting the stage of, of Armin basically talking us through everything that happened because that's what he normally does anyway with being the narrator. But then at the end of the episode, we find out that he's actually talking to Annie in the crystal, which is fucking Elsa's back. I was wondering when this was going to happen because there's no way he could have just left her out of it entirely. All right. And we just never see her again course that brings up other questions which is can she actually hear now i would assume yes because after the warhammer titan we had uh like she, she was basically conscious while she was in that thing she was able to look around and actually you know obviously use powers and everything like that she was fully conscious in there so i would assume annie is as well Maybe not to like a similar degree because it does look like she's been sleeping the entire time. Um, but maybe it's like a case of she's sort of like semi conscious, unconscious, you know? And you have like all of those stories of like people who talk to, you know, like family members will talk to somebody who's unconscious or in like a coma and that like, you know, doctors will say like, you can talk to you can talk to them they can hear you kind of thing so it's like kind of like a thing of like their brain is is picking up everything that is being said so that it it's actually getting in there and that maybe because i thought that once we figured out that the jaw titan was able to crack into this hardening stuff that that would be the way to get annie out but then that would be forcing her out and i don't know if that's the correct way to do this we would also have to get a hold of Galliard anyway. So, you know, there is that. But maybe it's just going to be a case of 
with Armin talking to Annie that Annie comes out of her own accord, you know. Um, so you know, we'll we'll see what happens for that. But yeah, I mean, back to like what I was talking about setting the stage for what comes after. Now that we are caught up in everything that that you know, everything that happened up until last episode's point chronologically. Now it's like yeah, um, you know, Armin was like. You know, like, it's kind of killed any hope for peace, what they've done. So, it's like, well, well, what now then? Like, does that mean you just literally trample the world and take over then? Because I just can't see that being... I don't see that being the right way to end the show, you know? So, like, the story just, I don't think, would be satisfying if that was just the way they went. Because then they would just become literal just tyrants that just kill everyone else, you know? I, I don't like the idea of that for the show um that in some form of capacity like there has to be a a peaceful ending you know what i mean like they've fought and they've fought and they've fought they've finally re like achieved peace you know what i mean it feels like that everything that they fought for wasn't just in vain for anything you know that that actually they managed it so you know if that comes from the fact of like Armin's narration is actually him talking to people and telling the story so that they so that people have a perspective on it that they can you know understand and empathize with it that they can achieve peace then I think that would be a nice way for it to end it um I'll, that would be really cool um so oh what else um yeah the fight fight um thing that Aaron was talking about of course that I'll lose back to this uh, first season, I think I'm pretty sure it's episode seven. Um, but it's when Mikasa is, well, it, actually, it, it is before. It's in episode six, I think, because it, it's the one where Eren has killed the, uh, you know, the, the kidnappers and the, the murderers and whatever, and there's still one left, and Eren's being choked out, and he's basically telling Mikasa to fight, right? And then obviously that comes back in the next episode where he's telling, you know, and it's interesting that they're bringing that back now because now it's a case of like you know they were defending themselves before and now it's like they're on the attack so it's a different you know what i mean it's it it, it it's like a what's the word like it's a, it's a bit sinister now it's like the meaning has changed from those two you know from the two different situations um because before it was just about defending and it was survival and, and now you know I mean you're seeing it Eren looking in the mirror like I guess like just understanding like what he's become and he's just facing himself telling himself to fight all right the, to push through to keep moving forward as, as we know that's the quote um And I guess that's what this this final season is probably going to be about. Is everyone has their own feelings about what they do, like what what they are doing, and whether or not they rein in themselves or they just choose to fully go ahead. I don't know, but th there has to be some catalyst for peace. I truly believe that there has to be, because I just I don't see this being a case of like. Well, either the Paradis, Paradisians win and they take over the world, or they all die and that's the cost of war. I would be so disappointed with both of those, so there has to be a catalyst for peace, man. Because um, I don't want this entire story to just be summed up as a, you know, well, this is what war is, you know? Because I feel like we already know that, you know? It's not like a... It's not something that we need to... Like it's not going to be like if that was to, if that was actually to happen, right? And all of the characters that we love actually do die, and it's like, well, this is the cost of war. I feel like you just, you know what I mean? It's not like people are going to be like, oh, that's it. I understand now. War is bad. You know what I mean? So there's no way that that can be the case. There has to be a catalyst for peace. Um, Gabby's attitude is still just annoying me. Um, I'll just leave that there. Um, so yeah, Zeke's plan. Um, 
His secret plan. Obviously, yeah, we knew it, it's to use the royal blood with the founding titan. But we didn't know to what degree. So it seems as though he's wanting to use the titans in the walls as a sort of safety mechanism as well as now it's a case of like they can just use them to flatten the earth. Uh, you know. But um, yeah, it was interesting seeing like that sort of change as well across the episode of like you know, like you had uh, Pixis there um, towards the end of the episode, like even after three years and they've got the Titan, like, you know, they stole, Yel uh, Yelena stole Titan serum from them and uh, and gifted them to, the, uh, you know, to, to Pixis and everything so that the, you know, the server core can use it. Um, but they've still got guns pointed at them, you know what I mean? As, as if like, you know what I mean? But I think it was down to the fact of the that Zeke was there at that point for that meeting right so well he wasn't in there but i can get why it's tough because if the, everything that they've known of all these you know sending the titans to the walls to keep them in there and everything like that how do they not know that this is all just an elaborate plan so that the parody slot trusts the malians and then at the point where they tr actually do trust them they're backstabbed and then that's that you know uh I mean, I guess to some degree we still don't know, because Yelena is an interesting character. She's like, she was like Zeke's emissary, in a way, and it was interesting because even before she showed up, Hanji was trying to sort of be a bit diplomatic, like attempts to be sort of peaceful with these people, like to kind of understand them more, to, you know, to start off on the right foot. Um, which is interesting. That was before Yelena even showed up. So, yeah, they didn't even know about Zeke's plan or anything like that beforehand. And they were trying to actually be peaceful with these people coming over here, which is very interesting. Um, you know, it, it just gives you that idea that their mindset isn't to fucking to try and, you know, fight. At least, you know, a lot of characters. Eren is obviously different because at the end of season three, the last thing that he says is that if we kill our enemies over there, we'll be finally be free, right? So Eren's already got that mentality, that idea in his head that, you know, he has to go kill those people. Cause he because he just wants to be free. So it's yeah, it's it's a tough it's a tough nut to crack. Um But yeah, Yelena is interesting because the way that she thinks about, you know So I'm guessing Yelena is Eldian, right? Um And she obviously saw, like, the bad side of, of the Malians putting her down and everything. And that she saw Zeke as, like, a fucking... Like, a god, like a protector, almost, of, of the of the downtrodden. Um, so, of course, that's obviously why she's so... You know, like, behind Zeke and everything that he does. Um, and that, to some degree, like, she, she has the same, I guess, reverence for Eren. But I suppose... She would to other titans as well then? I don't know. Because that was her first glimpse of Zeke at all was in the Beast Titan, right? And and that's kind of, you know, so I assume that she must feel the same way about the other titans. And not just, you know, Zeke and Eren with them being, you know, related and everything. I don't think it's that way inclined. But, uh, yeah, um... It's just, it's weird that the way that she acts is very, I don't know, she's so calm and collected, like, like I said, when in that, like, sort of meeting with Pixis and she had the Titan serum and everything, that, like, you know, we'll, we'll sit at the same table again soon. I don't know, like, because... I don't know. I don't know if I fully trust her yet, but you know, it, it, she definitely has an interesting. She has interesting characteristics. I'll put it that way. Um, I love the different perspectives of, of uh, diplomacy as well, of like Yelena and um, what's his name, uh, Onya Onyan Capon. It's a tough, tough, tough name. <laughs> um, that they were telling Hanji and Levi about, you know. 
showing them guns and everything and the tech that Mali have, uh, how many soldiers they've got, a million, and then they get the, like you know this, this fighting from the air kind of thing, and and Hanji's like struggling to <laughs> keep in the fact of like what are, what are those, and Levi just has this perspective of like don't give that away because you'll make us seem weak. It's just interesting just having those two like different you know perspectives from those two characters because of course Levi's not going to be trustworthy of these people you know what I mean Levi wants to get the upper hand early on um but uh but yeah I mean Levi's still got that sort of second in command thing going on because obviously Hanji was the one that was given um you know like top spot for the survey call right she took over from Erwin um and Levi yeah it's just uh, <laughs> it's like oh he's just like the kind of you know the, the, the second in command that that's still I don't know I feel like he's he's better at diplomacy than Hanji <laughs> Hanji's just like very I don't know she could be too like emotional you know up front which can be bad of course in uh, when when you know talking with the possible enemy um, giving away too much but yeah it was cool that uh, the different perspectives there um what else yeah so Zeke being put into a hotel and it's the giant forest the giant tree forest I, I just I think that's just so funny that like Levi's like this would be a perfect like environment for you well, because he's a monkey <laughs> you know, so he's got all these big forests uh, these you know these big trees that he can you know leap from one to the next or whatever just a funny way that Levi's like just constantly getting digs in to, to Zeke you know but also the fact of like, you know, it means that they can fight him with ODM gear, right? If he if he chooses to, you know, to actually attack or anything like that or do anything stupid, then you know, maneuver gear can be used in those big trees. Um, and uh, and yeah, so really cool. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it is the same giant tree. It, it makes sense that it would be right, the one that um, they try to trap Annie in. Um, so yeah. What else? So yeah, I guess we'll talk about Onyan Capon or whatever his name is. Um, that, you know, I think, who was it? Was it Hanji that came out? Or was it Sasha? It was one of the two that came out. Uh, and just immediately came out and just asked why is your skin black? Because <laughs> they don't know, you know? They've never had any black people in the walls at all, you know? They've had Asian people with Mikasa, but she was like the only one, right? Because from the line of her mother, her mother obviously died. So I think she was the only one. So it was like a rare thing. But yeah, I just find it, I find it like, you know, funny that because they're just so innocent, they don't know, you know, the reasons why they've never seen, uh, you know, a black person before that they come out and ask just so innocently, you know. And I like his response, because his response is so, like, kind of, I don't know, like, playful, I guess, to some degree. Where he's like, you know, it's because God figured it would be interesting to have a lot of different people, or, what, or whatever the quote was. Um, you know, and that uh, they immediately came back and asked again, like, kind of, what is God, or, or whatever, you know, they said. Because they don't kind of they've never actually thought about a god per se they always thought that the what was the religion was like the the, the walls of a god right and that's all they ever really had in terms of like religion so they never even thought about a, a person like a, a creator right um but it's interesting that um on Yankapon talks about like the one above Ymir right or the one of the god that gave Ymir the powers right so yeah he just sees it as a kind of like a, you know, a, um, what was it, a monotheistic god? Just one god that creates all, you know what I mean? So whether it's Christianity or, or, or you know, whatever, there's one god that is the creator of all things and then and then that's that, you know? But, uh, yeah, I just I just find it interesting that, like, you know, re like, these are some really interesting characters right now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, but, yeah, it was just so innocent. I just found it funny. Um, 
so yeah I mean other than that I don't think there's anything else to really talk about I think I've gone through everything um I love the fact that Eren grabbed the boat <laughs> from underneath and just and just placed it <laughs> you know what I mean like, like next to land it's just so funny you know but it's just uh, yeah I mean I guess that's an interesting thing is like even though they like Hanji and whatnot was attempting to be peaceful with you know these these people that Eren to some degree must have been in on that as well because he was the one that obviously carried the boat over and he was fine to just stand there even though the guy was pointing a gun at the at, at them you know so even though Eren at the end of last season was talking about if we kill their, our enemies over there like I don't know I guess he was just still following orders I suppose but yeah it, it's it was funny it just <laughs> you know what I mean he must have just been hanging out under there like, I guess he just dived in, you know what I mean, moments before, right under the boat, and then just, you know. Interesting. But I never even thought that they could swim, like, you know. It... Yeah. Never even thought about that before, like, would they have learned to swim? I guess they would have learned to swim at some point, right? They would have. But I guess it's just different swimming into the sea as opposed to, like, I don't know, like a lake that was inside the walls, you know. But I guess maybe for their training when they were cadets, they probably would have learned to swim in some capacity. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I think that's uh, pretty much all I've got. So. Yeah, I think, I've, I think I've gone through everything. But if I have missed anything, I do apologise. But, uh, but yeah, that's all I've got. So thank you everyone for watching. In the description below, I have links to certain things. One of them is the Discord, so you can get yourself over there if you wish. And I also have a Patreon page as well. So if you do want to support me on Patreon, that would be very much appreciated. There is a bunch of different tiers and rewards there, like early access. is $5 a month. Gives you access to shows a week early. And there's the full-length tier, which uh, gives you access to full-length reactions and everything like that. So if you want to watch my full-length reaction to this episode or any other episode that I watch, then uh, that's the tier for you. And there's also the exclusive tier, which gives you access to full-length movie reactions and things like that, which uh, I'm going to be reacting to some movies this uh, year. So look forward to those. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's all I've got. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.